All right, let's go to Exodus chapter 18. We're starting a series today called Scalable, Ready for the Reward. I got to tell you, today might be some shouting type stuff. You know I don't try to amp you up for no reason. You know I'm not that kind of preacher. Um, I, build, I build this house on word and, and education. But today the message is very prophetic in nature. So there's going to be some tight moments, but there should be some shouting moments depending on what side of the fence you're on. Hopefully you're on the side where you're going to get the blessing. If you're not on that side, I suggest you get on that side today. Amen. But it is prophetic. Let me tell you what happened. If you're new to the church, this church is nine years old. Yeah, we just turned nine, right? This coming up year will be our 10-year anniversary. That's pretty significant. We have seen God do amazing things. We started this ministry with just me and my wife. And, um, you know, over the years, it's been a really tough road to get to this point. God has not even, he's not even begun to start what he's doing at this church. Um, but every, it seemed to me that when we first started, for the first three years of the church, it was very, very hard. And, you know, we decided to preach the Bible. And I found out that the message inside the Bible was a message about a kingdom. And it's the message about a kingdom, which is a culture. It's a government. Okay, a kingdom is not material things. It's not even material in nature. It is a spiritual government. Are y'all awake? And I didn't know. I thought it was the greatest thing I had ever heard that God didn't want to empty the earth out to get me up there, but actually he created me for a very special reason. He created me to represent him on the earth. And that and that, that was an eternal assignment, not a play around on the earth a little while, then go back to heaven deal which is what most church doctrine teaches you. You're down here for a little while to play around. That's not even what the Bible says at all. You are here, excuse me, on a special assignment. They're currently, because of sin, we're in a program to redeem and reconcile people. Some people are already living their kingdom life now. But, but we're here to redeem and reconcile and win souls to the, to the Lord. Amen. But as kingdom people, I, you know, we know what that means. We're trying to get people to immigrate from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We're not trying to get them out of the earth. We're trying to take over the earth. Kingdom people, y'all need to help me out. I know. See, taking over the earth is a whole lot more work. And it's a different agenda. It's a different mission. The traditional church mission is survival until heaven. That's why you feel like you're on defense all the time. My agenda is not survival till heaven if I'm a king. The, the Bible is about God coming to the earth and taking over. That's a completely different strategy. And it comes with completely different benefits. So I, as I was commissioned to preach the true gospel of the kingdom out of Jesus' own mouth. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the earth. And then the end of what the world calls the ages shall come and then he instructs his disciples as you go preach this message the kingdom of heaven is here in Matthew chapter 4 he said when he first got baptized he comes up out of the water and he says the king he said I want everybody to repent re listen scalable right redesign your life to host the kingdom because it is here not coming, but here. He was standing in a group one day, and they said to, to him, questioned him about his parable, and he said, listen, I'm here to tell you the kingdom of God is not coming. He said, many of you standing here today shall not taste death before you see the kingdom of God, the Son of Man coming, and the kingdom of God reigning right here and now. In other words, some of y'all are going to get this revelation today. You know what I thought? I thought people were going to be excited about that. I thought people wanted to know why they were born. Everybody's searching for it. I thought people wanted to know what the Bible really talked about. And when I realized it, I said, the whole world is being fooled. Christianity is nothing more than a religion. It's a business. They had the business that wasn't Christianity in Jesus' day. 
but they had the religious business going there too. And you know why Jesus was crucified? Because he's bad for business. Because he preached the kingdom. What preachers preach today wouldn't got you crucified. Jesus would still be here. They'd have let him go. As a matter of fact, they might have gave him a plaque. You know, when the world is giving you trophies, you, I mean, sometimes getting an award from the world is okay. You know what I'm saying? But if they really knew what you was up to, they'd probably be like, we got to shut him down or her down, right? Like, so, you, so I decided I was going to do this. And you know what I found out? For the first three years, the church didn't move. You know, we couldn't buy a T-shirt. Y'all, the T-shirts that we had, the Excel church t- T-shirts we had, we couldn't do anything. We barely got those T-shirts. We begging people to support us when we started the church. Begging. Sending out letters, hundreds and hundreds of letters. I'm checking the P.O. box every single day. Two, two uh, envelopes would come in there, and I'll open it up, and I'm like, okay, Lord, help me out. And it'd be like $10, and I'd be like, ah, But let me, this is all part of the message. I'm explaining something. So, so we, we went through these seasons. Listen, but here's the thing. As hard as it was, we were faithful. We were faithful. And we decided to preach a message that was, as you're going to hear as I get into it, it was scalable. The message is scalable. Because it's what God, see, God needs people to preach a structure. Because the kingdom is an order. It's a structure. I hope you're writing this down. It's the structure that hosts. And you remember, I, I don't know if y'all were here, some of y'all are new, but when I just did the series on protocol, when you preach the kingdom, you're preparing people for the return of a king. So I'm preaching a kingdom so that you are ready to host. This is the protocols. So that you, your mind is able to, it's scalable to what God is trying to do in your life. Okay, so when you go to the world system and get educated, you got to be careful that you don't, because if you know kingdom things, the world is going to pull you out of that. Their system is called anti-Christ. The word Christ is the word for kingdom. It is the anointing or the present rule of a kingdom. That's what Christ is. It's the truth. It's the reigning truth of God. And so they're they're not anti-church and they're not anti-God. It's anti-Christ. It's anti your uh, connecting with your true identity and so that you would prepare yourself to receive a king or to receive what God is bringing you. Okay? And so we were faithful with that message. Faithful, 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 faithful in the high school over there at Campbell High School in Smyrna. Right? Every week I preached it. I, they tried to talk, my, my, my pastor friends, they tried to talk me out of it. One guy told me, he said, Pastor Mike, you, you, you're preaching just too, it's just too deep. You're just too real. You just, you just tell people about themselves. I was like, I don't understand. I'm, I'm, I'm lost, right? Like people are telling me stuff. You know how sometimes you don't understand who you are? And I'm looking at the Bible. I was like, I can't see anybody who didn't do that. I'm looking for, you know what I mean? I'm like, these are my role models. Jesus, tell you about yourself. Tell you how evil you are, <laughs> disobedient, perverse, wicked. If you fall, if the shoe fits, wear it. He ain't, you know, he, he's not insecure. He's not worried about you paying his bills. He's just going to tell you. If people want something from you, they lie to you. If they want something for you, they tell you the truth. Oh, am I getting any amens? I feel the it. it ain't too cold to shout in here. Come on. So we were faithful. And listen, around year three, so I, I really did get to a point. I really got to a point where, where me and my wife, we couldn't, you know, understand what was going on. I said, gosh, I said, we got great uh, people here. We didn't have a lot of people. We had great people. And, and the team was working real hard. We had to bring all the gear in and take it all out every week, you know, and all that. And we had a good time doing it, the best time. No complaints. People just loving God, doing the hard thing, right? And so, I mean, rain, sleet, snow, cold, whatever, hot, cold, whatever, right? And, and it was great. And, 
and I, I, when, as year three was getting ready to turn, as year three was getting ready to turn, the Lord said to me, in one of my prayer times, he said to me, he said, in year three, I'm going to do something. He said, most people have been watching you, and it looks like nothing is happening. He said, this year is going to be a year of resurrection. And then I, I said, well, what does that mean? He said, what I mean is, think of it how uh, in Jesus' journey. Think of it this way, okay? When it looked like you were being faithful, and when it looked like for two days, nothing was happening. Looked like the enemy had won, right? He said, but on the third day, something came up. Y'all, can I tell you something? We couldn't. We didn't have, the church couldn't, we had no staff members, including me. We couldn't afford anything or anybody. I mean, and God said, listen, is you were faithful. We didn't do anything different except for we obeyed God. On, I mean, we didn't do anything majorly different. We didn't just change the church or nothing. Year three, something started to happen just because it was time. Because we were faithful. And... Year three, something started to change. Then all of a sudden, the attendance started to change. The influence started to change. The re, you know, I had on Goodwill clothes back then. I was able to buy a jacket that fit me. Y'all, y'all ain't y'all ain't y'all been here since I've been able to buy clothes. But y'all, my clothes used to be baggy and my teeth were all messed up. I got braces. That was not year three. That was actually about two and a half years ago. Well, my teeth are straight now. Hallelujah. And I just, I always ask my wife, I said, how did I pull you? How did I do that? I must have been. Well, I, well, that game must have been strong. You hear me? Because what was it? It was the Lord. <laughs> but year three, listen, listen, what I'm telling you, you got to take some stories and apply it to your life. But I. I'm not trying to go back into the thing too far. I'm just telling you, year three, that's significant, three, right? So something changed. Then we went through a time where we was on that level, okay? And we went for another three years, and 2020 would have been the third year again, okay? And so something significantly shifted in 2020. We got this building. We started having partners I don't know if it was like y'all decided one day. I don't know who's here. I can't tell, so don't, I'm not talking about you. But I don't know what happened. The giving was good back then, but then all of a sudden, 2020, every, a lot of my friends' churches were dying, and we were going through the roof. I'm talking about financially. I mean, people didn't want to come physically because I can understand it was a little scared. But, but, you know, financially, we were going through the roof at the time. Thank God, because we had to build this, uh, renovate this entire building. This used to be something else, y'all. We, we gutted the entire space, carpet, stages, paint, all this black on the ceiling. That, you don't believe how much this stuff costs to do this, right? Bathrooms. Those bathrooms didn't exist like that. There were two little bitty bathrooms, all them stalls in that girl's bathroom. Uh, we had to, we, I mean, we were pulling up concrete, bathrooms, showers, meeting rooms, all in this area back here. Listen, it was crazy. But third, the third year, something else changed. Now I'm starting to look at God. I was like, so when I, I just recently took, this is significant, I guess, so, because the Lord has me giving you this backstory. But so what we are coming up on this year, so we just turned nine. We just entered another three. I don't follow patterns like that by themselves, but, but if God speaks to me, I do. So I really was feeling um, just pressured. So me and my wife, you know, I've never taken a sabbatical. I've never taken a trip just to go seek God. I've never, I always seek God, you know, during, I schedule it. It's in my week, you know. And, I, and, and my wife, I, t I talked to my wife and she was like, well, you, you just got to go to the mountains or something. And so I never wanted to do that, you know. I don't want to go off somewhere by myself, you know. But anyway, it got to the point where I had to do that. So I went up there and I spent a couple of days there. And I said, Lord, speak to me. So he started to speak to me. And I have a bunch of stuff he gave me during that time, but he brought it back to my attention. This is another three. And the message is going to make a lot of sense to you today as I'm telling you this because you're here right now. And what we, because we got to this level, and then the, for the last three years, we have been, it's been great. It's been strong. It's been fun. 
We've been able to do things we never could do before, reach places we've never been able to reach, partner and give money to churches all over the world. Go to, I've been able to go to places I wasn't able to go to before. I've been able to reach people and, and partner with people and been able to take care of things for people in this house that we could never have done before. Amen. Not on the levels that we're doing it. Yeah, that's something to be grateful for. That means you're getting it. And you're believing in the mission of God's church. And so we're entering, we just entered another three. This is brand new. We just entered to another three in October. Okay. And so God told me in the mountains, he gave me a lot of stuff. I'm going to try to start unpacking it a little bit today. But what I'm here to tell you today is that what God, there's another blessing. And you know I ain't about this type of stuff, but it's all right to shout today. There is another blessing and level on the way to this house. And if you are connected to this house... That means you, but there is instructions that go with this. It's not, I'm going to tell you, it's not for everybody. It's for everybody that's going to hear what I'm saying today and receive it. And when I tell you, sometimes you do something a long period of time and you see nothing. But if you stay faithful, there just simply comes a time when it is time for the harvest. I'm just telling you. The third year of our ministry, things changed. The next three years, things change this, on this third year, and then going beyond, there's a season happening right now. You are going to see some significant differences happening in your life if you have been faithful. If you have not been faithful, you better get faithful right now. You better repent and jump in right now. All right, y'all going to have to help me a little bit today. Exodus 18, now can I get into the instruction? I got 30 minutes left. I don't, I don't know how much, I might do more than 30 minutes. Let me get into this. It's going to sound a little bit, so this ain't deep today. You know what I'm saying? This is an announcement. I'm going to get deep next week. This is an announcement. So as I came back down the mountain, God told me that I needed to rescale some things. Personally, ministry, business, all types of things, right? But then that message transfers over to you. Watch this. In Exodus 18, now you know Moses has led the children of Israel out of Egypt. They have an old structure in their head. Okay? So they were there for a long time. You come out of that bondage, and they still are used to that bondage. Okay? They're out physically. They're not out mentally. And so they're out there. And Moses is meeting with his father-in-law. This is where we're picking up the story. And he wants to tell them about Tell him about all that God has done. And this is where most people stop. You know, God does a thing, and they just, like, want to stay there. Let's, let's package that. Let's patent that. You know, that move of God. I, oh, that when that organ played, everybody jumped up and down, and the preacher's like, hold up, that's what they like. Okay, look, every week. Oh, they like a prophetic word. They like for me to do these little one-liners, these little zingers. Oh, okay, every week. Why? Because God moved on that one time. I'm just going to box it up. And I'm going to open it up every week so I can get them emotional so they can do. And so Moses is talking to his father-in-law, verse 8, uh, about all that the Lord had done to Pharaoh. So, uh, and the Egyptians for Israel's sake and all the hardship that, that had come upon them on the way and how the Lord had delivered them. Hallelujah. Right? Oh, my God, the Lord has delivered us. I mean, you know, I stood in the, y'all, y'all, I met with a preacher one time when we first started the church. And we had just gotten out of a time where I was going to the food bank to get food. I'm the preacher. It got so bad. It's, it's around Christmas time, too. It got so bad that I went to the food bank and stood in the line. Yeah. And I told the preacher that I met with that I had to do that. He said, oh, my God. He said, are you, are you still eating like that? I said, well, no. I said, the Lord has delivered me from that. I said, but I did it. Now, I can't tell you, I was offered many times ways out that were dishonest. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was. I was offered many. I couldn't see. My little girl was, how was she, five? Five, four? She stood in the food bank line with me. I'm the pastor. I'm saying, God, please don't let nobody see me here. 
my wife is sitting in the car watching me in the line with my child, and we came here to do this for God. Before I left, I made a strong six-figure salary. Could live how I want to live and drive how I wanted to drive if I so choose. I'm kind of cheap, but I could have. That's all right. My wife had to make me buy stuff. And, and, and then she had a separate job. So we were doing just fine. I gave it all away to come do God's work. Then I tried to find jobs here, and we, God would not let us have jobs. You better not quit your job. I'm just telling you how it happened for us. I don't. That, that's not your word. And that led me to that, you know. And I was like, okay, Lord, you won't let me have a job. Here I am standing here. Actually, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't even that upset. I'll be honest with you. I'm just thinking back. I, I, I wasn't sad or upset. You know what I felt? I have to be faithful. I have to humble myself. I have to do whatever is required to get to the people that God is sending me to reach. I left the city that I grew up in and moved to a, this city where I knew no one. And I just packed it up and left. And so I'm standing there. And she's, my wife is in the car, tore up. And she's like, Lord, I know you did not bring us here for this. Right? And so, anyway, as the God started to deliver us, we, we were excited. We were excited. And, you know, he's sharing this story. I'm tying some of my experiences to this story. Sometimes when God does something, you get out of that little season that you were in, and you want to stay at the next place. Because then it, you know, it was different now. It was a little different. It wasn't much different. It was very, it moved along very slowly. And so he says, this is what God has done. He delivered us from the hardship. The enemy has been defeated. And Jethro said, well, let's skip over to verse 14, I think it is. And then Moses, um, so when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did for the people, now he's watching Moses operate in this next level. And when he saw all that Moses did for the people, he said, what is this thing that you are doing now for the people? Why do you alone sit and all the people stand before you from morning until evening? Somebody say scalable. scalable. He said, Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me and inquire of God. See, this is what happens. When people have to come to the preacher to get every single word that God's going to say to them, the church don't move. The church is bound up. We have to beg everybody to be here. It's cold outside. You sleep in. Times get hard. You don't give. See, I don't relate to you because I gave when I was at the food bank. I would rather give and sleep knowing I did what was right and go to the food bank. Because I thought and I knew that God is faithful. I was not afraid to let it be tested. I know that's not y'all. None of y'all. But I'm saying, I'm talking about the people that you sometimes talk about. When they have difficulty, they come to me. And I judge between one and another, and I make known to them the statutes of God and his laws. And so Moses' is father, so now there's a difference. He's teaching them about God's kingdom versus the one they came out of, which was Egypt, right? And so Moses' his father-in-law said to him, this thing that you do is not good, Moses. He's bringing it to his attention. The structure that you have in place right now is not good. Both you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourselves out. For this thing is too much for you. You are not able to perform it by yourself. I'm here to tell you, this is a prophetic thing right now. I'm here to tell you, this can apply in many different ways. You got to take this into your own life. The thing that God wants to do is different than the thing he just took you from. And the place that you're in now is not suitable or scalable for what God is bringing and here's what I'm telling you. And I, you know, I don't do this every week, so you better listen good. The next year in, in September is the Hebrew count on the Hebrew calendar is the year 5783. 5783, which is the image of a donkey, I mean, a, a camel. The letter is called Gimel in Hebrew. And I have a whole, I'll bring some teaching to that later, but this is just a broad brush today, okay? Not details. So, but it gives this image of bringing and delivering. Because a camel is used to bring things, okay? I have a lot more, but I'll give you just a piece of it. So there is something on the way. That's September of next year. 
I'm not here to tell you you got to wait till September of next year. What I'm telling you is there is something on the way. But in the year that you are in, there is going to have to be structural changes and scalability. And the faithful will be rewarded. Somebody online needs to hear what I'm saying. The faithful, those that have restructured the way God has asked them to restructure it. The, way, the people who move what they are supposed to move. The people who sacrifice what God says sacrifice. The people who put away what God said to put away and pick up what he said to pick up. The people that educate where he said to educate or forget what is in the past and look ahead. The people that do what God is saying to do, there is a delivery coming to you. And you are going to watch your faithful friends get their packages and I want you to be one of those recipients. Amen. I was on the mountain with God, I'm telling you. And he started to break it down for me. Because I, I, I have been, again, sometimes I'm starting to notice, notice this pattern in ministry where I'm getting frustrated. And then it just so happens, I don't know if this will be a thing forever, but it just so happens that it's like every three years right now. And God said, you're in the third year. He said, you're in the third year. And he said, this next season, I'm telling you, it's just time. And if you stay faithful, I got something for you. Amen. All right. We said, now, did you get the scripture right? All right. So as we begin, now, I have to talk about some things for my, for my time I have here. But this is just, I'm giving broad brushes. I'm going to break it down as we go along, okay? It's good to know that God has not forgotten you. And you've been being faithful. And I'm here to tell you, I, I wish that people would let people preach from now on. I wish people would stop trying to handcuff the pastors. And not allow them to convict the people again. And not allow them to preach a truth and let this moment be an edifying moment. Churches are just hyping folks to death. And then when you, every week is the breakthrough. It's not the breakthrough every week, y'all. It's not. I'm telling you now, there is one coming. But I don't say that every week. Every week I don't get up here and say, y'all, I'm telling you, he's going to do it. You knew it. I mean, because you say that now, you know, how many times you see God is not doing anything. You don't ever look at the preaching and go, this man full of it. I don't know why you don't, because that's what they say every week. Bills are packing with folks getting lied to all the time. People telling the truth. They, they trying to tell you like, hey, it's good to hear the truth, y'all. You need to stay with me. Yeah, you want strong, because listen, the ones that are getting lied to, they're not ready. They're not ready. They're the same people that when the world lets them down, everybody's like, we need to follow them. I'm like, why would I follow you? You're just as scared as the world is. You're in the same condition. So we got to make sure that we allow God to say what he's got to say. So here's what you need. Write some of this stuff down. I hope y'all getting excited. Write this down. The series on scalability, it's going to get real good. But one of the things we need to realize about God is that once he is done with something and ready to release the next thing, he's done with it. Write this down because I'm giving you instructions on how to be ready for this. God will at times put away things he used in one season. He will put away, I'm telling you, he will put away people he used in one season. To you, just apply this. It, it applies church, but this applies right in your house. He will, he will put away situations he used in one season. It will expire. And there's nothing you can do to recreate it. Good or bad, God will put away situations he used, good or bad. And God will move enemies that he was using in, in certain seasons. The enemy will expire. See, people, a lot of people don't understand about enemies. A lot of people think they have to fight every enemy. A lot of times you don't have to fight. That's why you have to understand kingdom things. You need to have a relationship with God that allows you to know when to engage and when not to. Okay, because every enemy doesn't require your attention. And neither does every friend, by the way. Because sometimes you have those people mixed up, friends and enemies. Listen, I'm telling you that some enemies you just have to outlast. You got to be faithful till they give up. Am I preaching to anybody? I feel the amen's building. So I'm just here to tell you, this is your week. If you wanted to shout, this is your week. 
Okay, so some enemies you have to outlast because there is something coming. And there is going to be revelations that God used in some seasons that are not going to be the same in the next season. God is going to replace things that he shared with you before with something higher. People already think they didn't figure God out. I'm telling you, you got to have your mind. You need to get do like Paul said. He said, you know, I just counted all as loss so that I may be able to gain Christ. Just count it all. Just say, yep, that was good for that season. God is opening my mind to some greater things. He's going to put it away. He's going to put it away. He's going to share something different with you. It's going to seem to contradict what he taught you before, but it doesn't. It's just that that was that level, and now this is this level. He's going to upgrade that. You have to let him upgrade that. That's why I told the story about being at the food bank and stuff. See, some people, once they get out of something, they don't want to ever be tested again. I didn't like that season. I didn't like it, and sometimes it probably wouldn't be the same, but God still would require me, would you sacrifice it all again? Would you do it again? Yes. Do I want to do it again? No. But you see, that's what people, they go through something, they say, oh, I hope that don't ever happen again. Listen, if it happens again, it'll be different, and it'll be a different level. And it'll be a different size of promotion. And you're going to keep going through these types of things. You have to trust God. He pulled you out of the last one. In fact, this one, you should be able to go through it without so much chaos. You should be able to go through it with a little more peace now. You should be able to look at it and say, I ain't afraid of that. People threatening you say, I've been threatened before. That's why you got to forgive folks that have been through enough stuff and seen God come out and bring them out of enough stuff because when the world is threatening you and you're still standing there like, do I look intimidated? I've learned what to do with bullies, right? Okay, so this is what God is doing. And there's going to be a, a season that we're in coming up that is an acceleration of things being removed and expiring so it's an accelerated season of removing a lot of things and here's where some th you know things that a lot of people don't understand about God but there's also going to be judgment on enemies of the gospel judgment on enemies of the gospel judgment against wickedness you've been watching the wicked prosper they're going to start suffering they are going to suffer enemies of the ch uh, anybody who's attacked the gospel or the things that God has been doing or the things that he wants to do or the people of God. I'm telling you, wickedness is going to get their reward. And it's going to be happening so fast, you ain't going to know what to do. You'll be looking at the reward of the wicked like, oh my goodness. But God is going to protect you if you are faithful. Because here's what I know about church folk, not just church folks, but worldly people too. I know that once they see something that seems to be working, they will jump on it and ride with it. Even if it, they've been told, maybe God told you or the pastor told you or somebody you trust. They said, that's wicked. You shouldn't be, don't follow every trend. And the wicked are going to start getting their reward. It's already happening. Did y'all see? The Bitcoin company bankrupt. In one day, they start investigating this. They're like, hold up. Like, what did people do? Oh, Bitcoin, digital currency. Everybody jump in. Oh, that'll save us. What you don't understand is, you see, the world is trying to rescale for something that seems to be more sustainable for your future. But they'll do anything except trust God. So we'll make up a different currency. Let's make up a different thing. An attempt, it's just an attempt to save themselves. No glory to God, no representation of God, no represent his culture, no seeking God, no talking about God. And you think God is just standing there like everybody's getting rich and everybody's doing well. And then suddenly the bottom falls out in one second. You know what God told me? God said, son, here's, here's, how, here's how weak the wicked are. He said, because, you know, you see the wicked prosper and you think, well, how, well, when is the end of this, right? How far are they going to get to go? Are they going to take over our whole lives? And he said, let me, let me tell you something. 
He said the entire world could turn wicked. The entire world. Everybody. He said, and I could still overturn it. Like that. And then he said, he said, he said, if you don't remember, and talking about the idea of globalization, the idea about the world uniting themselves and building a city to themselves, the idea of a world creating governments that unite but never give glory to God or serve God, the world, the nations don't serve God, y'all. So the globalizing idea has been tried before. So he said, do you remember what happened with Noah? The whole world was wicked. He said, I just say one family. I started over. He said, you remember what happened in the Tower of Babel? He said, they got it all together. They built this whole thing, a city to themselves. He said, you see what I did? He said, you should never be worried about that. He said, in one second, I'll confuse them in a way. They'll be fighting each other, killing each other, and I will move you right along to your destiny. I'm telling you now. I'm not a fire and brimstones kind of guy. I'm not trying to get nobody scared. I'm telling you that God is going to reward the wicked. And he's going to reward the faithful. You, 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 you don't think God tells you, not just in the Old Testament, but the entire New Testament, for you to remain faithful in hard times and under pressure and under temptation, but that people who are unfaithful get the same thing that the faithful get? See, that's that foolishness that the world teaches. We all do the same thing. I mean, we, we all don't do the same thing, but we all get the same thing. If you don't see the, 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 the wickedness of trying to train, condition your mind to think that way, you start applying that to God. He's a good, good father. He's so good that I could be following God standing in the food bank line, faithful, giving, serving, right? Rain, sleet, snow, faithful. Everything I get my hands on, God got his first. With offerings. With my family eating jelly toast in the mornings. You know, I could have I stopped that and we could have increased our breakfast items. I could have stopped that and got a different car by now already. I still drive an old car right now. That's going to change. I hope you all don't hate me when that changes. I've still been shopping for a car. I've been looking for a car for like two years. I ain't did it yet, okay? My, 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 my wife's car, I changed her car a couple years ago, but not me. Still got that 08. Feeling great. Chrysler 300. Now, when I got it, it was new now. It was, boy, that car, when I got that car, I thought I was something. You hear me? <laughs> it gets old. After a while, the car gets old. But I'm going to get a new car. I, that's not a, anything special, right? But what I'm saying is, if you think, see, being faithful... It gets its reward, and you don't know when it's coming, but the same reward doesn't come to everybody the same. Faithfulness is encouraged. And some people, they wish things would change, but you're not faithful. You won't follow God into a hard place. You won't sacrifice. You got your car already. I waited. You know why? Because I'm a tither. My tithe is worth about five car payments. I could get it now. I could just cut my tithe in half. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I could have moved long before now. Mm -hmm. Instead of living beside the people I was living beside for a while, I had 17 lawnmowers in the car, six boats. I mean in the driveway, six boats. Come home. To, I don't even know who's in my driveway. It was cool. You know. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not going to get far today, but I'm telling you. Faithful. People don't understand this. See, I don't know where we lost this church, but if God can't even, let me, little things. God said, if you'll be faithful with little, how many of y'all know the Bible? What does he do? Makes you what? He makes you ruler of what? Why don't people think that matters? I said go to church. They're like, I don't know if I'm going to go today. It's cold. God's like, if I can't trust you to be in attendance, that's little. 
I ain't even asked you to do nothing yet. I didn't ask you to come on Saturday and clean up the church yet. I didn't ask you to clean no toilets. I didn't ask you to serve yet. I just said, get here. Folks still be sitting there, I don't know. And they're like, but Lord, rain down. God was like, you wasting your time. <laughs> you wasting your time. See, this is, where pe- this is where people, you hear this other gospel that applies to everybody. It's not like that, people. God blesses the faithful. He requires faithfulness. And faithfulness is equal. That's the only thing that's equal. Whatever level you are on, be faithful. Wherever you are in life right now, be faithful. And being faithful to God is the preparation for the reward that's coming. Because the faithful get more. The faithful get the bigger responsibility. Not the talented. The faithful. The world today says, oh, would you more talented? We're going to give you the opportunity. God says, I'd rather have faithfulness than talent. I am preaching. So accelerated loss of things. There is going to be judgment. A lot of the stuff that the world, see how much time I got left. I'm doing all right. The, the, a lot of the stuff that the world has been, now, I hope you can see the bigger picture here. But a lot of the things that the world has been putting up uh, in terms of their structure is not going to be sustainable for what God wants to do. So if you are a worldly person, you don't know you're worldly, but if you're a natural-minded person, right, and you don't understand kingdom things, there's no way to be faithful. Being faithful means that I understand what God wants from me, and it ain't going to match up to what they said. It won't ma- You won't hear what God is saying on the news. Y'all should write this part down. This is about to get real important. You're not going to hear what God is saying on the news. God is not going to do that. You're not going to know what God is saying by watching trends. I'm telling you, God is going to do everything he is going to do through his churches. This is not just the place we come to get encouragement. This is the local embassy of the kingdom of heaven. This is where God speaks to the citizens. This is the only authorized dealer for the spiritual government of heaven on earth. The world systems are not. So when God, the way that God gets into the world is through the church. So you come here from out of the world. God blesses you or he deals with you. You take out there and build. That's how it works. But if you skip this, you just build by their scale. And guess what? Building by their scale is not a foundation God can build on. When you design a house and you put down the foundation, God can't lay anything on that foundation because it's too weak. It's not scalable. You understand? I'm trying to make this plain to you. See, some of y'all are going to have to go destroy stuff that you built without God. Mindsets and attitudes, things, relationships, and people, schedules, and things that you put in place. And God said, I know maybe that was good for a minute, but I'm done with that. I'm done with it. Where are you headed now? And what I'm trying to do next, that ain't going to work for me. Glory. Hallelujah. I got to tell you, so I hope that hits your personal life, but I'm here to tell you as a church, we should have, y'all, I'm going to be honest with you. I know something about to happen. We should have been at three services. We should have been at three services. We ain't even at two services. And I don't care about no pandemics. We should have been at two services. When they, when they announced the pandemic before, I said, pandemics don't stop purposes. I didn't cancel my plans. I hope you didn't. I said, I don't know how God's going to get us around this, but he will. And he did. So where are we at? See, if this is what people don't understand. People mock church attendance, and they say, oh, well, pastors just want a bunch of people in the church. Ladies and gentlemen, if they don't get to the local assembly, they don't change. You go out there and do influence, but as I've said many times before, write this down in case you didn't understand before. You cannot convert people while they're in their environment. You can't train them on first shift. Y'all ain't go, because you know why? You sit down and start discipling them, the boss gonna come by. What y'all doing? What y'all doing? This ain't, I need you to type. 
you over here praying. We just praying. No, no, no. See, this is your time to go deep. At home is your time to go deep. You got to bring people into the assembly. Oh, it hurts when it falls back on the people, right? Pastor, preach better. I'm doing what I can. That's all I got. It don't get no better. <laughs> Y'all understand? It? See, because we have created such a business of this, it's not sustainable to what God wants. Not us in general, the church as a whole in the world. So our, we have a destiny coming due to us. And there are structural things that were good before. So we say, praise God, but won't work next time. Won't work. And I feel it like a person delivering a baby. Because God is, I don't know what it is, but there's sometimes where there's nothing you can do to make God move. And then all of a sudden, if you were faithful, there, there it is. Hallelujah. Y'all going to go home. This is going to be in your, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to plant this seed in your spirit. You should care. You should care about your church filling up every week. If the church is not full, the people are not reached. If the church is not full, the people are not reached. It's not the whole equation, but it is the most critical part. It's the foundation. They have to come out of their environment into a royal environment where it's a completely different structure. Completely different culture. All your friends are lying to you out there anyway. They just agreeing with you. You come in here and you grow. You come in here and you get taught. You come in here, you get in the presence of God. You come in here and God tells you what he's actually going to do. And you thought what was on the news is what was going to happen. It might happen to them. Okay. I got a few more minutes. Y'all good? Do y'all care if the church grows? To me, I equate church growth, church attendance, church serving, people serving, Church giving, all of those things are factors. To well, there is like a scale to whether or not people are understanding and are they being obedient. These are great. These are grading systems of obedience, because God says to do every single one of those things. And our gospel today, let me let me help you out with kingdom things, okay? The church today, the gospel is selfish. That means when you get saved, you got saved for you. So. So, uh, the, the, the gospel of today is personal salvation. The gospel of the kingdom is national salvation. The, gos the, the, the gospel that the churches preach today is individual blessing. The actual gospel is national blessing. The gospel that's in the Bible has to do with God elevating, I mean, the one that we teach is God elevating you. And that's the end of it. The, the, the Bible is about God elevating a nation, his own culture. He calls it the body of Christ, which is also known as church. Not just the assembly, but the citizens of it. Do you understand how to see? I can see that some of y'all maybe were taught somewhere else. It's not about you. I'm glad you got here. And now we want to empower and edify you, but it's not about you. See, when you get like some of these folks that I could pull up and show you them and show you how selfless they are, they understand. Because it's not about, was I cold today? It's not about, did I endure a few hard things? It was about, did I do what God told me to do with what he gave me so I could reach who he told me to reach? I don't know if this is making any sense. See, see, you got to be selfless. How many of y'all got children? You start to understand, right? How many of y'all got small children that live at home? Smallish. <laughs> Teens and stuff. Well, you know, I got a teenager and a five, seven, so. Oh. How many? Six-year-old. He's six. I thought he was seven. You know what I think about all the time with them? At the end of the night, like every single, every, I'm talking about being selfless, right? Every single night that they are in my house, when I lay down, I know I'm not actually going to get to lay here long. 
Anybody know about that? I know that in a minute, they're sound asleep. I'm thinking about them. I want to go to sleep too. But I'm going to have to get up and go to their rooms and cover them up. I don't know why people kick covers, freezing cold at night, kick co- I don't know why they do that. But every single night of their lives, and I'm never going to let them forget this. Yes. Not you. You go to sleep. My wife can sleep, y'all. Let me tell you about it. She actually gets up in the middle of the night. We do shifts. Because in, in the beginning of the night, I, everybody lays down. She's out. I, I get up, and I walk in there, and, and for, without a doubt, every single time, covers off. And you know what? I, it's a small example, but I think of that for life in ministry and in everything that I'm doing. Everything that you do, you don't realize how selfish you are. And God is not rewarding selfishness. When will you prefer your neighbor? When will you do what God told you to do with what he gave you? When is it going to matter for somebody else? You'll still be blessed. He's not requiring you to be poor so they can be okay. But as a parent and as a pastor and as a servant of God, I never think about it. That's why I never went on a vacation. I never went on anything. No matter how you feel, you got to get up and deliver. No matter what you're going through, you got to get up and deliver. No matter if you had a fight with your spouse, you got to get up and deliver. Right? See, there are, there are things that God has been asking you to do and be faithful and just because you didn't want to. This, this is going to be a breakthrough for you. The stuff, you should write it down. What has God been telling me to do? And I just haven't done it. What, what command has he asked me to obey? What thing or person has he asked me to encounter or talk to? or What, what, what has he been talking to me about doing? And I just keep putting it off. And the devil's trick is like, oh, that don't matter. That's fine. You know, just when you get to it. No, because there is a delivery coming. And the delivery is coming to the faithful. Let's see if I can. Give me eight minutes. I promise I'll stop at 1140. Is that okay? This is not too hard, is it? I just want to touch. Let me, let me, let me read Luke 19, 11 through 15. And then I want to talk about just the big picture. And then we'll get deeper as we go. This is very, it's quiet, but I think this is good. Luke 19. Okay. So this is a great scripture to talk about faithfulness, but I want to pull something kind of specific out of it. Just write it down and study it later. Verse 11. So it's the parable of the minor, but I want to show you something real quick here. Now, as they heard these things, he spoke another parable to them. This is Jesus talking. He's teaching about the kingdom. It's very very interesting. He was near Jerusalem, and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. This this is something I've taught you to, to look at. But you need to now underline this in your Bible. Were they trying to go to the kingdom or did they think it was coming and going to appear? See, they, they wouldn't see church today. They're like, when are we going to heaven? No, that is a brand new doctrine. That's not, that is not the Bible. None of them ever asked Jesus that question. They were like, oh, man, I thought the kingdom was about to be back right now, here. They thought it would appear immediately. Therefore, he said, a certain nobleman, watch what he said. A certain nobleman went into a far, went into a far country to receive for himself what? A kingdom and to return. And so he called ten of his servants and delivered to them ten minas and said to them, do business till I come. Do business till I come. Verse 15, skip to verse 15. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, He then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. He said, I'm going to give you a certain amount of wealth. And the minor is, this is material wealth here, but you can apply this to everything God's given you. Everything God's given you. Have you been faithful with it? I don't know. See, what is what is faithfulness? He said, what have you gained with what I gave you? Did you eat it all? I gained some weight. (laughs) I ate it all. 
I gained some spiritual weight. That's the weight you got to watch. I got more selfish. He said, what, what do you think Jesus is going to be looking for? Your, your Jesus bumper sticker. He said, no, I'm back. I'm back. And y'all know he's here, right? He said, I'm back. I want to see what you have gained. He said, my instruction, I give you resources. My instruction was expand my kingdom. Do business till I come. Occupy. This is the language of the Roman government at the time. They call it an occupation campaign, which is where they are taking their kingdom into a territory, and they are going to extend and spread their glory or their culture and take over the area. And they're going to do it through, it. generally it's done through business, and then it's done through force. But generally, did you know, that's why a lot of countries protect their business trade deals with other countries. Because they know that if they start letting too many American, for example, uh, restaurants and things of that nature, companies set up in their country, then the whole culture actually starts to change. It's not just about doing business. When you do business in another country with the stuff God gave you, it should be culture shifting. I, I see, I, people said, people said, Pastor Mike, can, 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 can we go into the music industry? Can we go into the music industry for God? I said, I don't know. Can you stay godly? You ain't got to sing about God, but you can't sing about all that other stuff. You can make music for the body and for people, but you can't sing that stuff you're singing now. And you can't start joining up with them, putting them on your album. Can you go in and not compromise? He said, do business and take over till I get back. If I put you in there, if I gave you the platform, what would you do? Would you be faithful? I'm going to go deeper in the, in, the, in the time coming. But listen, do you hear what I'm saying? God has given you something already. What is about to come now and what God is about to do now, God is going to be looking for those who are marked with faithfulness. And in case you missed my point today, faithfulness means I have to restructure. Put my graphic back up, guys. I have to restructure, rescale according to God's kingdom. In other words, I'm going to have to listen and obey. I'm going to have to listen and follow God. Whatever he gave me, there is an accountability to it. I got some legal stuff I'm going to break down next week. I got some governmental stuff I'm going to break down next week. I'm going to show you exactly the legal structure of this whole thing. But I'm here to tell you. Can you play me something, guys? I told y'all we're going to be here long. 1138. When does that happen? So listen, I hope this announcement has struck a chord. I know it's the holidays, season, whatever they call it. I know you got family members that you need to get with and all that stuff. Now, more than ever, this next season, I'm not just talking about the calendar year. I'm talking about the next season. The next season, the faith, there's something coming. The faithful, those who follow what God said to do, listen, under pressure, under temptation, from your family, from the world, from the market, from whatever, still doing what God said to do with what God gave you. I know that wasn't the deepest thing you ever heard, but can we just give Jesus a hand clap? Because we at least know. There is some reward coming to me. I'm going to be faithful. And if you've been faithful, go ahead and hit your feet. Amen. And if you've been faithful in this place, continue to be faithful. I know it gets tough. I know it gets hard. And if you say, I don't think I've been faithful at all, Pastor Mike, here's your day to turn it around. You don't have, listen, you need to understand this. There's nothing that you have that you have earned. You are sent to earth on a mission. You have earned nothing. If you got a talent, that ain't special. You better thank God, and then he's going to check. Did you do with what I gave you? I gave you a talent. What would you do? Did you go build your kingdom or mine? You made a bunch of worldly friends. You made some money. You did some stuff. My church ain't moved an inch. 
pastor still up there taking up offerings and begging. God done blessed you mightily and you're still sitting on it. You say, but that's for my, that's my house, Lord. I just don't connect. I'm sorry, brother. I don't connect with you. I don't because in order for this church to be here that you walked into, I had to do a food bank line. So I don't, I don't relate. I know what it takes. And my value I'm using, is that okay I use my story? I don't know your story, so. I'm just telling you, when you make a sacrifice, there is somebody that God is trying to get to, and there's something God's trying to get to you. I ain't never seen God not overwhelm me for the sacrifices that I have made. I ain't never gave God something, and he, I know it might have been a tough time, but I ain't never gave God something, and he didn't give it back to me a hundred times. I ain't never seen that happen. I ain't never seen, I ain't never known somebody that happened. Hallelujah. Somebody about to get blessed. I feel like praying for you. Can you lift your hands? I know that ain't too hard for y'all. That's an easy one. Lord, we want to be faithful. Sometimes it's hard to be faithful, Lord. We understand that. But God, you can give us the courage and the strength, wisdom to know what to do and and the courage to do it. I don't know, Lord. I have no idea what who's in this room today. I don't know who's online watching today. I can't. I just don't know. But I do know that you are bringing to close many of the wicked things the world has been doing, many of the wicked agents that have been surrounding some of your people here today and online, many of the things they're about to expire, and you are about to bring a new season, a new level. But the faithfulness, the structure. The scale, the foundation has to be there or what God wants to lay on you will crush you. So, Father, I pray, let everybody hear what you're saying today and get moving. May your house be filled every week, God, till we're overflowing, until we can't help but to buy a new property, build bigger facilities, and fill these communities with believers. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do we all agree? Shout amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's go take that word.